for usual living on this channel is for educational information and not intended as financial advice. So breakouts are doing what breakouts should be doing in that the direction has been decided post-consolidation. We had our B-band squeeze, 70-day consolidation, the tightest B-band since 2018. And then we had successive closes on the daily candles above the B-bands to indicate a breakout back in mid-July. Feels like it was 15 days ago or more, and it was. And here we are. I mean, this is very unsurprising if you're paying attention to consolidation, if you're paying attention to Bollinger Band squeezes, if you know that triangle breakouts should be continuation, all that sort of stuff. It's really no surprises here. Um, if we look at targets for this, if we measure this as a triangle with sort of a pole and we project that upwards, 1618 and measured move is between 11.7 and 12.6, which always sounds crazy, but that's the target. One thing I'm also paying attention to is the percent B, which is an underutilized oscillator similar to RSI. So as price closes in the in the V bands and continues to make highs, percent B will go down. So this is just another way to show bullish or bearish divergences. It says that the strength of the continued move is less than the strength of the previous initial push, which should really happen most of the time. That isn't unusual. And also if we look at the daily cloud, I talked about this on Twitter as well as a few videos prior, but bullish TK cross above cloud, the single most bullish trend continuation indicator in the cloud system. Can't really stress that enough. So to see that, the expectation is continuation. Blindly in a vacuum, no questions asked. Just like a Kuma breakout, you expect continuation from Kuma breakouts. You expect continuation from TK recrosses above or below the cloud. There was some concern, obviously, that we'd break 9K and go to 7.1. Never broke 9K. That trade never got initiated. And luckily, really, it wasn't like a garbly mess here in that you know it didn't it didn't break 9k and then never go anywhere and didn't break 9598 and then never go anywhere it broke 95 and it went to 11 plus right like it made a decision and just to look at the prior bullish tk recrosses above cloud so throughout the 2017 trend we had four of these and none since we had bearish tk crosses below the cloud in 2018 which is a great bearish continuation sign but the last bullish to get cross above the cloud was in 2017. And if we do get successive crosses like this, it's extremely bullish. It says we've pulled back, reconsolidated, and are ready for more over and over and over again. Obviously, there were several events that also coincided with all of this. But again, if I'm on a deserted island by myself with a coconut and a tooth infection, all I care about is the chart. I don't care about the news because the chart should tell me what's going on here. To tell me that there's some SegWit governance thing, some Bitcoin Cash hard fork nonsense going on, right? Like all that should be baked in to what's going on here. It should tell me that the Winklevi ETF got denied. Uh, it should tell me that Trump got elected. You know, it'll be interesting to see we're six years out from 2016. Obviously, with the U.S. election, we had some interesting volatility in November 2016, and November's coming up again. So it'll it's just like. Time is a flat circle, like someone's said before. If we look at the weekly cloud, again, a massive indicator of a bullish trend shift and a multi-week, multi-month trend to come is this bullish cloud flip. We've only had, realistically, a six ever. You kind of look at them all. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's kind of it. Kind of amazing. You know, it's only been, it's been 10 years and we've had like, very few trends in general for BTC. It's really just been up or down. There's really been very little of the dawdling we've had since 2019, July. Quite unusual. You know, you might think that trends are unusual in any market, but for BTC, trending is the norm. So who cares? Why is this important? Well, the, just like the bullish TK crosses, this weekly cloud flip is a massive, massive heads up that, hey, something's changed here. This is different than what, what's been happening. Now, this is different slightly from 2016 because in 2016, we had a 250-day chart pattern that brought us 
above the weekly cloud. Then we had the Bitfinex hack that brought us back to the weekly key June. So there was a lot of like weirdness here, obviously. Interesting, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens, right? Like, will the November election do anything? Will anything past that matter, right? Like, the concern is always that we pull back to the weekly cloud we didn't hear, but we might hear into 2021. So definitely be watching that. There's some argument to be made that we've already, you know, had this rum springa above the cloud that's returned us to the mean and we're ready to go as far as the trend continuation. It's certainly a lot of echoes of that. Oh, by the way, we also had having in 2016 and we had having earlier this year. So all this stuff is lining up pretty nicely for continuation in case you weren't on board yet. Uh, here's the 50 and the 200 on the daily. And again, these like to just be crossed and stay crossed. And it hasn't been the case over the past few months, but it's starting to look like the thrusters are moving finally for these EMAs and prices moving away from them. And they are moving up at a higher rate of change. Something to watch, just like the weekly key June here. Uh, this is a great long-term re-entry. If you don't want to pay attention to daily volatility, you can just put your bids on the weekly key June. Put your bids on the weekly 20 SMA. I didn't include that in this video, but that's another great trend reset mean that you can just safely put bids around. So let's say you missed all this here. You missed everything you know what i'm looking for if i missed everything into 2021 is getting a bid on the key june you know even the, even the bitfinex hack we retested the key june like it's it's weird man it's weird okay or woman statistically watching this video <laughs> but the weekly key june is where it's at if you've missed everything looking for an entry you don't want to follow in safe 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 bet is always the weekly key june or any you know daily key june is great too but the daily 200 is also fine. It's not as exact most of the time, but it's a fine mean reversion target. You know, for any market, always and forever is the 200 day moving average. If you look at the pitchfork again, we're not exactly in the danger zone to the upside yet, but you can see how we sort of trended on the upper half of this throughout 2016, 2017, before going berserk in late 2017. But what I'd be watching for in the next few months is just, you know, trends, testing this resistance, resetting at the, the midline over and over again, just like 2016, 2017. This is the two-year MA in the green here, and then five times the two-year MA in the red. You can treat it a lot like an oscillator. We have a ton of upside here, which the target sounds absurd. It's around 36K. As far as the top, now this will actually continue to move up if we trend multiple weeks, multiple months, just like 2016, 2017. So things could really get interesting if um, if this is real. You know, we'll see in we'll see in months, probably years to come. It might take 18 months for this to play out. Uh, let's see. So it was 2016 when we hit the bottom here, and then it was so it was a two-year trend really in in this specific EMA or MA band. So two years from 2020, maybe by 2022, mid 2022 will be 36, 44 K, something insane like that. I like this a lot because the target is whatever. Like if we hit it, great. If we don't, whatever. But I like the MA band because the highs and the lows have been captured really nicely. So you can DCA in, in the green, DCA out in the red. You can sell when it crosses below the red, you can buy when it crosses above the green. There's all sorts of ways you can trade this, but it just looks looks and feels great. You know, fits like a glove here. I talked about this a couple of videos ago probably, but the Q3 trend should have been flat. Historically, it's been mostly flat or negative. So it's a bit weird that we are this positive here. Again, some there's some weirdness. There's some strange things that happen happening that haven't been happening before. Definitely. Historically, Q2 is super bullish, Q1 super bearish, Q3 and Q4 are a bit mixed, Q4 more bullish than bearish. So I still think Q4 is going to be going to be a banger still. Uh, looking at the CME futures contracts, we survived a CME rollover. We had volatility to the upside a few days before the rollover. You're always concerned if you're consolidating into a rollover that it's just going to it's going to go the way you don't want it to go, right? Like you're super bullish. It looks bullish, but just because of the way the contracts roll over, it's going to go the opposite direction. That didn't happen. So that's good. We survived. Yay. This may be the end of this specific version of this chart just because I ran out of room to show stuff. But 
Let's all say a moment of silence for the excellent visual this has been over the past two years. Here's Tether. It's above a dollar. When it's above a dollar lately, it's been super bullish. That's all I'm really looking at. When this drops below a dollar for the first time, we're very likely to put a, a local top in. So I'm watching this kind of like a hawk on the way up here. Watching VIX as well like a hawk. VIX is a volatility index of legacy markets. So regardless of what, what's happening with price, when VIX goes down, price goes up with crypto. That's just been the trend. We're sort of correlated with S SPX and NASDAQ a little bit with BTC, more so with ETH, kind of not with NASDAQ. Like this, this will come and go violently at any given moment. It's better that we're uncorrelated. It's better that we're not correlated for an extended period of time. It's just better we're doing our own thing, right? Like we're on our own path, just got into college. We're finding our way. We're <laughs> experimenting with stuff, right? Like Bitcoin's doing its own thing and ETH to some lesser degree as well. Clearly, DeFi madness. Some ETH charts very similar to BTC. Again, we had this bullish consolidation with a squeeze, a mini squeeze above the 20 SMA with a inverted head and shoulders. So all this projected upwards. There was a cup and handle. I'll talk about that in a minute. There's no RSI bear div here, but there is a percent B bear div. And the percent B typically will be bearish or bullish before RSI. So it's no surprise that we haven't kept pushing above the B bands here past what we did during the initial breakout. Just as bullish momentum is waning. Looking at the ETH daily cloud, the Kijun supports at 293. But really it's been bullish since the Kumo breakout in April. And it's just been a beautiful, exactly what you'd expect. Multiple patterns here. This was an inverted head and shoulders broke up. This was an inverted head and shoulders broke up. This is a massive cup and handle broke up. Like it's, it's just doing what exactly it should be doing, which is great if you're trading this. Here's the cup and handle look as far as the 1618 and measured move. It's getting within this 334 or 387 zone. There's really no VPVR resistance here until 470, where there is also a yearly pivot. So it'll be interesting to see what actually happens here. But I really expect this to chill out below 400 um, before it tries to run at 470. I do not think we go straight there. It's just hard to it's hard to maintain this, obviously, right? Like you can't maintain going straight up for three, four weeks. You gotta consolidate a little bit. And it's really better if we do, because then the move becomes even more obvious. Volume certainly up on Bitfinex over the prior few months since uh, March. But I really like 470 as a target in um, like a six month target maximum. It'll probably hit that before the end of the year, if anything. But 5200 looks great. It's been bullish just like the cloud since April, doing exactly what it should be doing. The afterburners, the NOS has been turned on here with EMAs curling up. And if you ever get concerned, like I do when I'm in a position, right, and you're up, you're in massive profits and you're about to go to sleep or you're about to leave your hiding hole from COVID, you don't want to get the corona, and you say to yourself, well, we're getting this bearish divergence. I'm in this massive position that is in heavy profit. Do I want to sleep in this position? Is always the question I ask myself a lot. Yes, you can use stops, you can use trailing stops, you can do all this sort of stuff, but it's just peace of mind for me <laughs> to say, you know what, if this doesn't look bullish, if this looks like it's weakening, it's just better for me to just close it and go to sleep, right? So this is just an angle on that as far as low time frames are concerned. What to look for, clearly bearish divergence here on, on the four hour. This doesn't mean it won't reconsolidate and continue higher. It just means the probability right now that this keeps going is low versus some sideways pullback. If we look at the MA multiplier again, this is the yearly MA for ETH just because there's not enough data for the two year MA and five times the yearly MA up here. We get a target of 1K. And again, this will keep curling up if ETH keeps moving up. It hit the prior highs pretty nicely. It hit the lows pretty nicely. You can see just how oversold this got, right? Below the yearly MA, how quickly it rose up, how quickly it sold down. So it definitely got sloshed around a more sloshed around more historically than BTC ever has. But now it's finally regained some traction, some momentum. So, you know, 1K, just throw that out there. Sounds crazy, obviously, but that's the target for the, uh, the MAs. Maybe this is a two, four-year target, but that's where it looks like we're headed. 
Here's the weekly cloud again uh, for ETH, and we have this bullish DK cross. That's the go time signal. It's a bit late in this case. Obviously, you want to you want to start to cheat these edge to edge trades a little bit once we close inside the cloud. It's always better to be in a position when you know there's a bias, even though your size might be smaller. It's always better to start building, right? Like, okay, we're we're getting more and more biased bullish. We're getting more and more biased bullish. Okay, we broke this inverted head and shoulders median um, neckline thing. Broke above the Kijun again. Like, okay, we start adding. We start adding. We're adding again. This TK cross 470, 460. There's the target again, based on volume, based on yearly pivots, based on some 50% retrace level. That's what this is drawing here. So I like eventual continuation to 470 because this is so insane since the uh, TK cross. It's really hard to be convincingly adding up here, expecting 470 before pullback. So I'm definitely using caution in that realm. And again, I'm looking at these Bitfinex notional value. This is the long side of Bitfinex. The value is 615 million right now. It'll be interesting to see if this gets to a billion, what it looks like when this collapses, because it, it always does, it always will. It's just, it's just fun to watch, really. <laughs> There's no other market on Bitfinex that looks like this right now. This is ETHBTC. The two-day has crossed bullish on EMAs. It's crossed above the early pivot. It's kind of hit its target already at 035. I'd like to see it reconsolidate in a bullish manner up at 035. There's plenty of VPVR resistance, yearly pivots, but that looks good for additional upside. I mean, here's the weekly ETHBTC cloud, and this looks like it wants 05, which is a nice psychological resistance level. So if you can get in anything down here, which is where I'll be looking for a retrace, you know, the Kijun will move up a little bit, but Kijun is the bid. The cloud is the bid. It's also the stop loss, so you got to be careful with that. It's really tight here, obviously, but you want to see the Kijun move up a little bit and this to probably chill out a bit so you can get an entry because, it's again, it's hard to convincingly add when it's this blown out of the uh, the averages, basically. Like, yes, you know, the, the bias is bullish and you're probably going to be in profit eventually to 05, but there's a better risk reward if you buy around 03. I mean, obviously, right? And because we're talking about alts, Looking at Bitcoin dominance, it's really been a garbly mess. You know, this really isn't tradable. If, it, if anything, it just says what's what's stronger here, what's going on in the market. And what's going on is we're getting a lot of just new scam coins being added to the denominator of this indicator. So, of course, BTC dominance is going down, right? There's pre-mines coming out of nowhere in the millions and billions. So that's going to hurt dominance. Uh, looking at XRP BTC continues to fall basically to 2017 or 2016 levels. doesn't look bullish, but it does look like it finally wants to have a chance to join the party here. Really, this is unexciting for me until it's above 3K sats. Um, it's getting above the cloud. The cloud is hoping bullish. It's getting above the 200. It's getting above this VPVR zone. But I wouldn't be surprised if it just goes sideways. You know, garbly, untradable nonsense. Really don't like XRP long-term. ADA BTC has been just insanely rocket ship like in its trajectory over the past few months it's finally decided to chill out return to the key june it's a nice bid area you know there's this great consolidation here that just kept going uh, august 3rd they have a incentivized and incentivized testnet reward release so that i'd expect a bit of a dump on that honestly um, i wrote about ada for my latest article on bnc brave new coins you can check that out for more details there but uh, I'd, if I was in the position here, I'd be watching the August 3rd stuff like a hawk as far as what's going on with price. Because uh, this, <laughs> the, whatever this is up here is concerning from a volatility perspective, right? To see the massive spike uh, says that somebody somebody sold a ton of coin up here or just didn't want this to go up any further, right? Looking at LTC, BTC, also as depressing as XRP in that it's multi-year lows, there's a bit of a bottomy pattern here whatever this is it's not an inverted head and shoulders but it's something uh it's just it's just not a buy for me probably ever but <laughs> um it wants the mean revert to 067 0067 uh but there's just so much volume resistance on the upside i just don't see this doing anything ever until it's looks bullish again which it doesn't right now uh link btc pulled back to the midline of this chad pitchfork which has been excellent since 2019 predicts the highs, it predicts the pullback targets, it predicts the really good RNR buy zone down here and the red white uh, diag of the pitchfork along with the 200 MA, it's EMA, it's just been really great 
to buy it. And if it does get down here, I might actually buy some and I'll probably be buying the top because that's probably when it's going to just go to zero. But <laughs> you know what? I've just haven't been in this one this entire time. And it's been sad. I've been FOMOing internally on paper and not actually FOMOing. Um, I haven't become a Marine. Marine okay. I haven't enlisted yet. EOS BTC also depressing. Doesn't look bullish at all. Uh, it does look slightly bottomy here, but it doesn't excite me until we're above this VPVR level, right? Like, unless it reconsolidates and gets above the previous eight month consolidation level, why do I expect this to just be bullish again? You can't, you can't, right? Like, this could be setting up for some wacky inverted and shoulders, but until it's above 0004 or 0004, yeah, whatever this is, 40k sats, it's just uh, gonna be doing its own thing, really unexciting. The lastly, XTC BTC. Kind of interesting that it's it echoes LTC a little bit, and it gets in the fact that it gets these highs. You know, it's gotten these highs multiple times. I saw this on ETC as well, actually. Now that I think about it, but it's weird with these BTC pairs. Some of them you get this these three specific highs or lows, and then it just dies off, right, or it explodes. So you're seeing that here. It's in the pitchfork. It's below the 200. The 50 and the 200 look bearish for the or are about to look bearish for the first time since 2019. It's hard to know what to do with this if you're in a position. It's also, which I am, it's also in the previous all-time high zone. So for me, the play was just to buy it and treat this all-time high as support until proven otherwise. Treat this diag as support. We'll see what happens. Typically, from memory, uh, Tezos has had an inverse correlation with BTC. So if uh, BTC starts moving up, Tezos might really get hammered. And then it may be a much better buy. All right, that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe. Hit me up on Twitter. I read all the comments in the YouTube video. And happy trading.